I'm worried. It must be something serious with Eddie. He didn't even come down for supper. I say it's the modern way of living. When I was his age, a kid would go out in the back, dig in the dirt, and bury his frustrations. <laughs> well, something's bothering him. Say, maybe our little Eddie's found out about the birds and the bees. I know I didn't sleep for two weeks when I found out that their making honey was just a sideline. There's something wrong, all right. I just knocked on Eddie's door and he howled at me. <laughs> oh, my. That is a bad sign. He usually doesn't howl until the moon comes up. <laughs> Herman, Herman, as head of the house, I think you should get to the bottom of this. Now, you go right on upstairs and have a father and son talk with your boy. Oh, well, gosh, Lily, I'm not very good at that, you know, dear. You're his mother. Why don't you go up and have a father and son talk with him? <laughs> no. A thing like that is up to the father. Anyone who's watched Father Knows Best for nine years ought to know that. All right. But Donna Reed always handles these things on her show, you know. <laughs> oh, I don't know what you're all worried about. In my time, when I was his age, all us Draculas were spoiled rotten. Well, Grandpa, all children can't have the advantages we had. Eddie? Eddie, are you in there? Eddie, don't use that tone of voice with me. This is your father. Now open the door. Thank you. Now, Eddie, I have come up here so that we might have a little father and son talk. Why don't you come right over here and sit down? Fine. Now, what seems to be the trouble? Well, they sent me home from school today with a note from my teacher. I see. And uh, what have you done with this note from your teacher? I ate it. Oh. Well, that was very naughty of you. Uh, you know that we do not like you eating between meals. I'm sorry. Now, let me see. If you came home with a note from your teacher, we can safely assume that there was some trouble. Hmm? Hmm. <laughs> and trouble usually involves poor academic performance. Viz, to wit, and ergo, you failed arithmetic. No, sir. History? No, sir. Citizenship. No, sir. I flung tonsils. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, well, you see, my boy, you should not have taken the course in the first place if you did not think you were up to it. No, Pop. My tonsils. The school nurse looked in my mouth and said I had crummy tonsils, and I ought to have a doctor look at them, and they might have to come out. And I don't want them to come out because they're the only ones I got. Now, 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 Eddie. Having your tonsils out is a very minor operation. <laughs> There's nothing to it. Well, they'll have them out as fast as you can say Jackie Robinson. Are you sure, Dad? Sure, I'm sure. Your old dad has learned never to get upset or emotional over minor medical matters. Now, just open up your little mouth and let your old dad have a look-see. Hmm? <laughs> Tonsils. <laughs> Oh, three o'clock. Hmm, I just hope Herman gets Eddie to the doctor's in time for his appointment. It doesn't pay to neglect a boy's tonsils. Well, what do you need with a doctor? I could have taken care of it. You? Sure. When I used to fly around in Transylvania, I was one of the busiest throat specialists in the country. <laughs> oh, now there was a business a fellow could sink his teeth into. You know, that Dr. Willoughby is a good doctor, but I wish he wasn't so nearsighted. Last year, when Herman broke his leg skiing, he came here on a house call, and he put a splint on Herman's bedpost. <laughs> Thank you.
Well, let's take a look at his tonsils, all right? Ah, now, my boy. Now, just open wide, like this. Ah, that's it. Say, that's the worst looking set of tonsils I've ever seen. <laughs> mm. And look, why, there's a little hole in the back of them right there. We'll have to sew that up immediately. Uh, doctor, you're looking at your own tonsils in the mirror. Mm -hmm. Oh, they used to yell at me about that at Johns Hopkins all the time. Well, we might as well take his temperature. It never hurts to do that, you know. After all, he might have a fever. Here, here. This isn't going to do your throat any good, smoking cigars. Now, where is that thermometer? It's right there in your pocket. Oh, yes, of course. Hmm. My goodness. Whoop, oh, a slippery little rascal, isn't it? Uh, why, you have no temperature at all. Uh, you're not sick. But let's have a look at those tonsils anyway. Now, just open up, please. What is he saying, Mr. Munster? He says he won't open up his mouth and that you're a rat fink doctor. <laughs> Well, we won't have any of that. Come on now, Junior. Open up your mouth and I'll give you a lollipop. Will you get him to open his mouth, Mr. Monster? If I do, will you give me a lollipop? I'll give you a hit in the head if he doesn't open his mouth soon, I'll tell you that. Pretty Eddie. And now open up your mouth for the nice rat fink doctor. Okay. You're a kind boy. The kind I don't need. Let me see there. Hey, it's dark in there, all right. Just a moment. Hmm. Uh, do you see his tonsils, Doctor? I see a lot of goodies. Ah, that pancreas is real boss. But those tonsils will have to go. I'll get him to a real tonsil man. It won't hurt him a bit. He'll only have to spend a few days in the doctor place. Aw, oh, shucks. I'll miss being in the school play this Saturday. I was supposed to play the wolf in Little Red Riding Hood. And I've been practicing my howl all week. Now, now, Eddie, I'm sure the doctor knows what's best. Yes, uh, before you leave, Mr. Munster, would you care to have a look-see? Uh, do I have to? <laughs> Why not? After all, you wouldn't be squeamishy about looking at a silly little old tonsil, would you? No, I guess not. <laughs> Tonsils came out with no trouble at all. Yes. <laughs> and when we left him in the hospital, he was sitting up in bed eating ice cream. <laughs> you see, Herman? <laughs> I told you it was no big deal. You stayed home and hid in the closet for nothing. Well, come on. Let's go right down and see him. Uh, uh, Herman, uh, uh, Dr. Willoughby thought it best if, if you didn't go and see him. Well, why not? I'm his dad. Well, you see, dear, he explained to me that he didn't want you walking into Eddie's room and upsetting him by crying and screaming and fainting and all that. Uh, uh, the medical term he used was, um, oh, a going ape. What are they talking about? Well, why shouldn't we go down there and see him? I mean, do they think that a man of my background is going to faint at the sight of blood? <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's doctor's orders. Will you see Eddie tomorrow? They just don't want you down there tonight. Come on, Marilyn. Uh, good night, Grandpa. Uncle Herman. All right, Herman. What are you going to do now? Well, I guess I'll just go upstairs and put on my Al Jolson record of Sunny Boy and cry myself to sleep. <laughs> oh, no, you won't. We're gonna go down there tonight and see that boy. But Lily might find out, and she might yell at me and not make me my chocolate chip cookies and all sorts of mean stuff like that. Lily won't know. We'll sneak out of the house later, and when we get to the hospital, we'll surprise everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for a rotten old father-in-law, you're really a fun guy. Yeah.